the way that you admire some phenomenal, talented basketball player, some athlete, some singer, some artist, or some musician, anything like that, when you are at awe of them, there is somebody that is at awe at you when you are fully in your purpose and fully in your lane. What is going on, my beautiful people? Welcome to another episode. I believe this is episode 82 of the Pivot Mindset Podcast. My name is Justin. I'm your host. And uh, yo, I'm glad you're hanging out with me on another episode. I can't believe we're at 82 episodes. Uh, man, when I first launched this podcast, I was like, yo, I just want to provide some value to people. I just want to, uh, man, get this off. Like a lot of the things that I'm learning, a lot of the things that I'm putting into practice to be able to create a uh, opportunity to be able to give information out, to be able to add value to, to pour into other people's lives as I've been poured into. And uh, yo, so I can't believe we're at 82 episodes uh, I feel like I should be doing seasons at some point. I don't know. Maybe we're just going to keep, I, I don't know. We're going to figure this thing out. Um, but we, we looking, we looking down the barrel at a hundred episodes. Um, uh, man, this is, this is for me. Maybe this might be some encouragement to you, but for me, uh, this is, this is every time I do another episode, this is symbolism that, yo, you could, you could do anything that you could, you could learn how to process, uh, and do anything that you can, become consistent at something. I love, like, to me, this is, this is a consistent thing. For me, podcasting is all about consistency. It is a, it is a drop in my consistency meter every single week. So, uh, yo, if you are checking out this podcast for the very first time, uh, man, this podcast is a mindset podcast. Um, and so for us, we believe in the pivot mindset. So, uh, what the pivot mindset means is that we believe that life is all about the pivots and those who decide to make the pivots decide to become successful. And so success is a deliberate decision that we get the chance to make each and every day based on how we treat our minds, right. And how we cultivate our minds and what we put into our minds and how we control our mindset. Um, as a man think it, so is he, right. And so, uh, let's dive into the topic. Let's dive into this episode, Man, I want to talk about how to stay in your lane um, versus being in other people's lanes. Uh, man, this is this this kind of and honestly, y'all, like I feel like my topics that I come up with, um, these are God inspired. Like I I just say, Holy Spirit, give me give me a topic to talk about. What what do you want your people to hear? Um, what do you want me to share? Um, and I'm often talking through things that I'm dealing with personally or um, things that I'm seeing online or just anything that God impresses on my heart. So, um, that's really what this, this episode is about is, uh, or the, the, the idea of this episode really just came from being intentional and, and really listening to God. So, uh, I want to talk about how to stay in your own lane and I'm gonna break this down, but I think this is such an important topic in 2023, uh, because I, I bump up and find that so many people, uh, can find themselves getting in this uh, game where they begin to live and try to play everybody else's game when they don't realize that they have their own game to play that they can absolutely win at. And so if we got really clear on being in our own lane and staying in our own lane, um, because I think it's human nature, right? I think human nature uh, uh, wants us to and allows us and kind of motivates us, if you will, to f try to find some some camaraderie with the people. I think it might be how we're community oriented and how we need to be in community and how we thrive in community. I think everybody is always looking for somebody to empathize with, sympathize with, connect with. Um, for example, I remember, man, when I went to uh, my, when I went to college and I predominantly grew up in a very diverse neighborhood when I was a kid went to diverse middle school, elementary schools, high schools, middle schools, all that kind of stuff. But man, when I got to college, that was like my first predominantly white experience. And man, I remember right when we got to college, we, I did a, uh, a program called Cupita and it essentially was a program that brought, um, black and brown students that were, that were going to that college to campus about a week early. And we just connected, we networked with each other. We did personal development. We did all the things um, just to build community before everybody else came to the campus. And they, they told us, they were like, yo, when you guys right now, um, right now you guys are the majority on the campus, right? It, at this point, there's nobody else here. It was only black students on campus. And they're like, hey, once school starts, 
you are going to be sprinkles on white ice cream, right? And what they were essentially was saying was like, yo, there's about to be a bunch of like white people that come to the school and y'all won't, the school won't feel as black as it is right now, right? And I'm bringing this, I'm bringing this into the conversation because um, we, it, it, as an example of like, people just want to find ways to connect with other people. We want to find some kind of con- commonality, some kind of interest, some kind of way to find a segue to feel like we belong. I think that having commonality and similar interests is a way for people to find uh, that they belong or if they belong or not. And so, uh, but that is okay if you're trying to build community, if you're just trying to make friends, but that is not okay if you're trying to lean and determine and tap into purpose. Uh, Man, it is a travesty because I see so many people out there who can be absolutely in their lane, killing their lane, taking up their lane, taking up space in their own lane. And instead of doing that, they will give up and not lean into their gifts, their talents, their abilities for the sake of coveting somebody else's. And so what they do is they mire and model and try to act like and try to, you know, recreate and be like, And, uh, man, I just want to encourage you in this episode that, yo, you've got so much on the inside of you and God has gifted you with so much that the best thing you could do is just be the best version of you and to stay in your own lane. And so, uh, man, if you're if you're ever out there, if you're wondering how to be in your own lane. And here's the thing. I I realized that uh, as I was growing up and I'm still growing up, I'll, I'll always be growing up. Right. But when I was young. Uh, I had, and I still have tons of mentors and people that will pour into my life and people that really would shape my life. And I realized that when I was following certain people where I spent a lot of time with certain people, I would begin to model, sound like them, almost act like them, be very, like, almost a lot like them. And my personality, my demeanor, things would kind of model uh, and mirror people that I was around. And Uh, What I found was that sometimes you have to be an echo before you can become your own voice. And I used to beat myself up on it. Like I used to I used to be like, man, I I don't know why, like I'm just emulating these people. But I realized that as I was finding my own voice, I was finding my own lane. And so I will first say that it's okay if you are in somebody else's lane right now in this season of your life. But use it as a learning opportunity. You can't stay there. Right. It's okay to kind of dibble and dabble, if you will. But know that you absolutely uh, can't can't stay there. And so I'm going to jump into a couple things that I have for you really to um, really just ensure that you are in the right lane and that you are in your own lane. And so the first one is um, you have to know what comes easy for you and hard to others. Um, you've got to know your purpose. The best way to stay in your own lane, the best way to take up space in your own lane uh, and not be in other people's is you got to understand what comes easy to you and hard for others. Um, Like what area in life do you have no rivals? I don't care how fast you could swim. You will never swim um, like a great white shark. I don't care how fast you could run. You will never run as fast as a cheetah. doesn't matter how how good our airplanes get. They will never be as dynamic as a eagle, a bald eagle, when it's flying above the clouds, right? Um, That's because they are in their purpose. Like those things are doing the things in life that they have no rivals. And so the truth is you do too. You have an area, you have something in life where you absolutely have no rivals. And so um, you've got to be able to find that. You've got to know that your lane, when you are in your purpose, when you're in your lane, somebody is looking at you and they're admiring that. Like the way that you admire other people when they're in their lane the way that you admire some phenomenal, talented basketball player, some athlete, some singer, some artist, or some musician, anything like that, when you are at awe of them, there is somebody that is at awe at you when you are fully in your purpose and fully in your lane. And so you got to know what comes easy to you and hard to other people, right? Let's get to the second one. You have to, I believe, you got to try and test things. Um, don't get, don't be so caught up so early in life having to have it all figured out. Man, I think being exploratory and not saying that you got to do crazy stuff and do drugs and do all this crazy sleep around. Like, I'm not saying explore that kind of stuff. All right. What I am saying is explore things about your personality, explore things about your expertise. Try things on. You might try different jobs. You might try different skills. You might try like you might try different businesses to see you might 
you know, go to different jobs and see, you might try, like, you know, I know when I was in college, I switched my major a couple times because I, I, I tried one and I, I realized that that wasn't the path for me. And then I figured it out the second time around, like the second when I switched my major. And so you, I, I think it's, 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 it's very hard for you to pick it on the first try that you've got to be open and okay with trying, trying your lane out, right? Putting uh, the shoes on to see if they fit you well, right? Driving the car to see if it fits you well. And I'm just using those as metaphors to like, yo, what, when you, when you're in your lane, it will fit you. It will feel like, okay, this fits me. This is my thing. Like I can do this. And so your lane is so much better than anybody else's, right? Being in your lane, being tapped into what God has called you to is so much better than you trying to play and be tapped into other people's lanes and trying to compete other people's games, right? You got your own game, man. And once you learn the game that you were designed and placed on earth to win, dude, it's not even close. You don't even have any rivals, right? Uh, let's go to number three. The third way that you can ensure that you stay in your own lane is, yo, you got to be listening to the Holy Spirit. Um, I love James 1, 5 through 8. It talks about if you lack wisdom, if any man lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all who find uh, without finding fault and it will be given to you. You've got to know that there, the God that created you really holds the answers to that, to your life and to your life's purpose in the palm of his hands. He created you unique and distinct. He created you with a purpose there. You were not created by accident. You were not an accident. You were not just some by happenstance. You may have thought you came in this world by your mom and daddy, but you didn't come in this world by your mom and daddy. You came in this world by the God almighty, the one that stands high and looks low. He decided to use your mom and your dad to put you in this world, but they didn't birth. They didn't, they didn't create you. God did. They didn't have the ability to connect the embryo with the seed. God did like, they didn't have the ability to put the, to, to know the numbers of every hair on your head. God does. Right. And so you got to know that you are purpose, that God placed you on this earth for a purpose. And if you lack wisdom in that purpose, guess what? You can ask God. I know there are tons of books out there. There are tons of resources. There are tons of personality assessments. There's tons of strength finders and all that kind of stuff and disassessments. And There's all the stuff out there that you can do to learn more about you. But guess what? You can also call on God. You can say, God, hey, please reveal to me more about me. Help me understand more about my gifts. Help me understand more about my passions. Help me understand more about my strengths and weaknesses. Help me understand what lane you call me to take space in. Because best believe God has called you to take space in some lane. And I don't want you to get so caught up in trying to solve it yourself when you don't realize that there, that God that created you has, a, has an answer for you. He has a solution for you. He has the details and information that you can be using, right, to help you tap in and to learn what your lane is, right? So that's a huge one, man. Ask God. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. God will give you the wisdom, all right? And uh, here's the fourth one. I, I think a great way um, of ensuring this, and I, I, I do believe that obviously God can speak this to you by a Holy Spirit, um, but he can also speak to others and speak through other people that will come to you and help pour those things into you. Um, and, and so that pours right into the fourth one is getting yourself a mentor or getting yourself a coach, like somebody that can provide you feedback and give you, give you um, aspects of you and show you things that maybe you can't see from your vantage point. Um, man, having and hiring coaches was, is one of the best decisions that I've ever made with my life. Um, because what they, what coaches have done for me is they've been able to show me aspects of me that I wouldn't have known just because I, I live with me, right? I, I see me in the mirror every single day. And if you never, if you never look at yourself from a different vantage point, it'll be hard for you to, to understand who you really are, understand um, what limitations or shortcomings you have, or even understand what your gifting is, what your talent is. Man, I went golfing today, or, or not, I didn't go golfing. I went to the driving range to uh, just swing, swing some balls, hit some balls. And um, I, 
if, if anybody's an avid golfer out there, you know that you can try to fix your game by just swinging and in your head, you'll be like, oh man, I lifted my head or I moved my feet or I need to slow it down. I swung too fast. Like you can try to critique yourself based off of the feel of the swing and based on like where the ball went and you know what you should do to change it to make the ball go where you want it to go, right? But today I recorded myself from a couple different angles and it it inc- it, it it was like okay, <laughs> this is exactly what's wrong. This is exactly why you hit the ball the wrong cuz and now I'm able to slow it down, I'm able to watch it back, I'm able to look at the replay. I'm able to critique and give myself feedback because I was able to look at it from a different vantage point. I was able to look at it from a different lens. That is what coaches, that is what mentors can be providing you um, if you're really looking to kill it in life. Um, Honestly, I don't know anybody that has had some kind of significant result in their life that's worth noting, that's worth talking about, who doesn't have some kind of coach. I just don't know. It It just doesn't exist. Like, I don't know anybody that is truly self-made. Uh, <laughs> people might say that they're self-made. I think that you know it might go viral and it sounds good on social media and all that kind of stuff. But best believe that somebody coached somebody up, that there was a book, there was a mentor, there was somebody that gave somebody some information, some game to help them um, really become better and get better and be able to see aspects of their game that maybe they couldn't see from their vantage point, all right? And so, man, you got to know that your lane is the best lane you can be in. And I, I think that if you knew how important staying in your lane is versus trying to swerve into other people's lanes and, uh, and, and coveting what they've got, but you find so much solace in what you have and what God has given you is all the better. It's so good. It's so great. It's so powerful that, that truly um, the visions, the dreams that God has given you that he's given you the lane to walk in that will fulfill that that will produce the visions, the dreams, and all that kind of stuff you have. Sometimes we disconnect the two. Sometimes we we think that with the visions that God has given us and the dreams that God has given us, sometimes it doesn't make sense in the lane that we're in. And so we try to get out of that lane because there's another lane that makes sense to accomplish those results. What do you mean, Justin? Like you, you may think that working on your current job, that there's no way for you to get the kind of life that you have dreams of. But the truth is there absolutely can be a way and, and that you often don't know the way. And sometimes you will leave the thing that God has called you to in the season that he's called you to it to try to chase something that you think would absolutely there that would provide a better opportunity for you to accomplish the dream when all along you were in your lane and God called you to be in that place and to be faithful where you were. And so, man, I just want to encourage you where you are. Um, just do some, de- just do some deep thinking, just do some introspective thinking to say, man, am I in my lane? Like, or, or am I playing in other people's lanes? Like what, what area in my life am I not tapped into my lane? Is there an area in my life that I can get back over? Right. I can, I can put my blinker on, emerge right back over to my lane. Maybe maybe life has happened and you found yourself trying to become somebody that you're not. Maybe some relationship happened and it's forced you to evolve and now you finding that you were you at first were evolving to heal but now you're evolving to somebody else that's not even who you are, right? Like th- these kind of things can be so subtle and they can creep up on you. And so, man, let's stay in our lane, right? Staying in our lane is the best thing that we could do. Um, you know, if you, I think there's a quote out there, right. That says, um, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, uh, go together. And I I would correlate that to your own lane, right? Like if you want to go fast, just keep switching lanes like everybody else on the highway, right? Switching lanes, going in and out of lanes to go fast. But if you want to go far man, just stay in your lane, man, stay in your lane, go your speed, Go your distance, go your direction, and don't worry about all the other cars that's trying to switch lanes. Know that, like it happens in life, that all the people that switch lanes, they end up getting stopped at the same stop like you were at, and you just kept on your lane, just kept doing what you were doing. And uh, I think that's just like life, man. So don't get confused. Don't get, don't get distracted. Don't fall prey to the distractions that are out there. Continue to be the best version of yourself. Live the best version of yourself. And, uh, man, that's all I have for you in this episode. Uh, remember here, life is all about the pivots. 
and those who decide to make the pivots decide to become successful. I will see you in the next episode.